All right, so I know a lot of you guys like the sample, and I know a lot of you guys have been using the Arranger in the new MPC update. Now, with that came a few challenges because some of you guys like to use multiple samples, and when you use multiple samples, sometimes you have issues with samples overlapping into each other. Well, with this one tool that has already been in the MPC for a long time, this tool would definitely help you out with that overlapping issue. So. Let me go ahead and show you guys what the tool is. Bolo. Before we get started, if you guys need any equipment for your studio, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to Zounds.com. Zounds has a whole bunch of stuff on the site and they have a whole bunch of stuff on the site that requires no credit or background check. Meaning all you have to do is order it, they'll ship it to you and you can make monthly payments. All you have to do is add a credit or debit card up to the account and you can go ahead and get your stuff just like that. So if you guys need some equipment, make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to zounds.com and get you some equipment today. Also, you guys know I rock with analog cases because they make the best cases to protect your gear and they make the most professional stands to protect your gear as well. And they just released a new travel backpack called the Track Pack. The Track Pack Travel Backpack. Wonder if you can say that three times in a row. But this is the ultimate musician's backpack to travel with. This is a professional musician's backpack. You can put your MPC Live 2 in there. You can put your Machine Plus, your Roland SP404. You can add in your MIDI controllers as well, and you even have a compartment to add your laptop in there too. And everything stays protected because this bag is heavily insulated with nothing but protection. And to make things even better, they have a whole bunch of compartments where you can put your cords, your keys, your cell phones, hell, the kitchen sink if you want to put that in there too. So if you're a professional musician that is on the go, make sure you guys go ahead and check out this Track Pack Traveler's Backpack. I'm telling you right now, you will not be disappointed. Go ahead and click my link in the description to analog cases and save 10% today. So some of you guys are wondering, what is this tool that I'm talking about? And the tool that I'm referencing is the legato feature or the force legato feature that people use in like FL Studio inside of Studio One and inside of Logic Pro and you know Ableton and stuff like that as well. Now this tool has been in here for a while. I actually made a video using this tool a few years ago but I actually forgot about this tool and I actually went on a rant saying that the MPC didn't have the legato feature in it. But thanks to you guys, y'all quickly reminded me that the MPC does have the legato feature in it. It was quick. Y'all came on here and reminded me very quickly that they have this tool. However, there is a lot of people who do not understand or even know about the legato feature. Basically what this does is it plays the sample for the amount of time that the MIDI note is triggered. Now, I'm not gonna get too technical with this. I'm gonna try to break this down as simple as possible, and I'm actually gonna show you guys how this thing works. Now, most people that do use this tool, they use this tool inside of DAWs, like FL Studio, of course, Logic, and like Studio One, and yeah, even Ableton. Now, what this does is, depending on how long you press and hold a note, that's how long that sample will play. And as soon as you let go of that note, it will automatically cut off. It's much different than like using a one-shot feature to where you just press on the note and you can let it go and that sample will play all the way out, which that's how most of you guys do it on the MPC. Like for instance, some of y'all have noticed like if you use samples and you may have bounced down the samples inside of your MPC and as soon as the song is over with, it will play the completed sample all the way out until it ends. With this feature, you don't have to worry about that because as soon as that note stops, the sample will stop as well. And with this, you will have more control over your samples and things will be a little bit cleaner, especially if you're using like two bases. Like say for instance, you might wanna use an 808 bass and then you might wanna use a synth bass. And of course, if you're using a one shot sample to 808 and it crosses over into that synth bass, then you know you're gonna get that little nasty rumble, ugly sound while that synth bass is actually starting to play and we don't want that. Now, the reason why I'm actually highlighting this is because when we were actually building our beats the old school way in song mode, which you can still do in the MPC update, it will automatically cut off the notes when it would switch over to a new sequence. But however, in the arranger, 
it does not do that. But it's just like a linear way inside of a DAW. So if you're using a one shot, the sound will play all the way through, whether you are tapping on the note or holding on the note all the way. So without me talking so much, I'm gonna show you guys what the Legato feature can do and how it can help you. And I'm gonna show you guys where you can find this feature as well, because it's kind of in a spot where you wouldn't think the feature would be located, but it's in there. So let's go ahead and get over to a quick tutorial of the Legato feature inside of the MPC update. All right, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually just going to make a quick beat using some drum samples and using a chopped up sample. It's not gonna be nothing too crazy, nothing like that, but I'm just gonna try to show you guys how powerful this thing is and how you can use this side, the arranger mode. So I got a uh, some drums right here. I got a drum track right here and I got some drums. And uh, I'm gonna put like a quick drum track down and then we're gonna add the sample on top of that. All right, so the sample is from a kit from KXVI and I went ahead and chopped it up and I chopped up some short parts and I chopped up some long parts. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the long parts out so that you guys can see what I'm talking about in this video. So uh, we have this right here. So as you guys can see, they're pretty long chops. A lot of times people like to chop them up into like the 16 notes. This one was more or less like a one eighth note. Now, as you guys seen, when I press the chops, no matter if I would have pressed the chops like a short press or a long press, the sample was gonna play all the way out. So if I press it right now and I just do like a short little press on it, it plays all the way out. Now, if I even hold down on it, it's gonna play all the way out to the chop. So watch this. So it played the sample all the way out. Now, the cool thing about it is I have this where this is set to, the, the poly is set to mono. So if I press this, So every time I press the other pads, it automatically cut off that previous pad, but it still played the sample all the way out. And I'm gonna show you guys why this might be a conflict inside the arranger mode. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make a quick sample chop with this. It's not gonna be much, but I'm gonna make like a quick sample chop in this. And then uh, I'm gonna show you guys why the Legato feature is really dope. All right, so now that we got that done, let's do a quick arrangement and I'm gonna show you guys why I would probably want to use this in legato mode. All right, so right now we're in the range of view and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double this up, you know, just double it up real quick. And then right now we have 16 bars of this, okay, cool. So everything is cool, everything sounds great, but what I wanna do is I want to change this sample and I want to add some effects to the sample, but I don't want it in a certain part. The first part, I'm gonna leave it regular. The second part, I wanna have like an effect on it, maybe like a filter effect or something like that on it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into our main page right here, and I'm gonna go right here to the sample, and I'm actually going to duplicate this. So I'm gonna duplicate the sample, and the cool thing about inside of the new MPC update is when you duplicate this, this is a totally separate track from the original sample that you already have. So it's totally separate, has nothing to do with the previous sample. So now what I'm gonna do in here is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make another part inside 
of this beat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this part right here. All right, so now that I got that part selected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right here on this track right here, and this part of the sample, I'm actually gonna take out. So I'm gonna go right here, and I'm gonna press erase, and now we don't have that sample part in here. Now we can add the next part, and I already have it looped for this already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the main part right here, and I'm gonna go to this new sample track, and I'm gonna add a new sample in here. So now that we're in a new sample track, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up a new sample. All right, so we got that part in there, and now we have kind of like a little sequence going on, but I'm gonna show you guys where the issue lies with this. Now, I know some of you guys are probably saying, oh, you ain't gotta worry about that. As long as you keep that on one track, then just set everything to uh, mono with the polyphony and everything will be straight. Yeah, that is true, but sometimes we try to add different effects. Sometimes we might wanna put an EQ on a separate track, or we wanna put like a different type of effect on the track. And right now we're just gonna pretend that I want to put a new EQ on here because I don't really feel like going too far with this tutorial, but I want you guys to kind of just understand what I'm coming at here. So now that we're in the range, I'm gonna play this and then you guys will see what will happen when you have these collide together while they're in one shot mode. All right, so as you guys can hear, when that last note played out, it played all the way in to the next note, and we don't want that to happen, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys a very easy way to get that to stop, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right back in here to the sequence, and we're gonna go right here into this track right here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our global, and then, well, of course, we're gonna highlight all the samples right here, so we're gonna close that out, and we're gonna change these into note on okay so if we're in note on what happens is as soon as we let go of the pad it stops okay as soon as we let go of the pad it stops so i can play it and then we're done okay so now that we have note on we let go of the pad stops And guys used to sample like this a lot, and that's why when you would hear some of the older samples, you would hear these samples stopping, especially like in some Kanye West samples, you would hear the sample just automatically stopping, and that way it helps from the other notes colliding into each other. But we know practically when we're sampling like that, we don't want to be... And you hear all those gaps and stuff like the notes, you want to have like a seamless way of sampling. So we got that done on that track, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the next track and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back in here, go into the global, turn everything on. So we turn everything on the note on. So we have it set the exact same way. So now some of y'all are thinking, well dang, now that means we have to go into each one of our samples and then stretch them all the way out manually. I've seen some YouTubers actually do this and they were actually going through and they were stretching their notes manually and you don't have to do that. So to alleviate the pain of going through each note and stretching the length of it, we can just use the legato feature. So all we simply have to do is go right here to the arrangement right here on your track we click on here and we see our notes. Got our notes, everything is right here. And as you guys can see, the MIDI notes right here are very short, okay? They're very short and we don't feel like going through and stretching things out. But the only problem is the legato feature is in a very weird location. Now to access the legato feature, what we have to do is go right here to where it says time correct. Now while we're in the time correct page, as you see, it starts with right here, the type is start. We're gonna change that to legato. Simple as that. And then we press do it. So now that we did that, if you guys see, 
it automatically did all of our notes to where they lengthened out until the last note. For some reason, it does not do the last note. On most programs, like in the DAW, it does the last note, but in the MPC, it does not do the last note. So all we simply have to do is go to this last note, press edit end, and then we just stretch that last note out. All right, so now that we have that last note stretched out, now when we play it back, And then boom, we're done, just like that. So now we can go to the next track and do the same thing. So we're back in our arrangement view. We can go right here to TC. We have Legato selected. We just press do it. And it automatically does it that fast. And then of course on the last note, we still gotta go through and then just nudge that last note like so. So now that we have all of our notes set to note on in the sample play, we have the legato set up, so now that all the notes cut off, now we can go ahead and go back into our arrangement view. And as you guys can see, everything is represented on here. And then we press play. Now, as you guys can see, this is not perfect, but you understand the power of using the legato feature. That way you can use samples on two separate tracks and then add effects to them. And that way they can seamlessly play inside the arranger mode without the tail ends colliding when the next sample chop comes in. And like I said before, you can do this with basses as well. So if you have an 808 bass that may have a tail end that's a little long and then you have a sub bass that you wanna have on another track that comes in on a different part of the arrangement, you can do that as well. So yeah, it's a very cool feature in here, but once you guys keep using it, it will be a lifesaver inside of the arranger mode, especially if you use a lot of samples. All right, so there it is, the legato feature inside of the MPC3 update. As you guys can see, it would definitely help you out when using multiple samples in the arranger mode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, Peace out.